You've got a great face for radio. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I know that, yeah. The exhibitions You and Me in H03, and it's seven stories celebrating hope, working class culture, people, and characters that we both meet. A lot of them were shot in 1983 when I first met George, and I've been lucky that I've been able to reimagine them today over the last couple of years. So it basically brings the past forward rather than looking back. So the three stories was Rag and Bone, which was George when he was 19 years old. There was Candy the Barry, who's a drag artist, and he's now performing as Bobby Mandrell. And there was also the Star and Garter, which is a pub called Rainers, and I say let's go in there and take the prints in. And, um, and, and because the pub's exactly the same, you can actually sort of hold the print up to where it used to be, it's like that as well. And the other story was um, Changing Times, which is basically a look at the housing problems that I was facing in 83, 84. My love letter to Hull is the pictures I take. I'm walking the streets of Hull, I just capture moments of happiness or sadness. Uh, peacocks behind us is people I meet by chance. I'm asked them, can I take your picture? 90% of people are happy with that. And Gypsy Child was something, a long term engagement. It's been something I've wanted to do for years. Uh, I've been documenting the Gypsy travel community for 12 years. Well, the edit for downstairs is just gypsy children. I met Russell through a friend who, at the time, Russell was studying at Queen's Garden College, and he asked if I, Russell could come along with me on the horse and cart and document the day to day life of me as a rag and bone man. So that happened in 83 over a period of a month, the summer of 83. Yes, Brett Hamley was there. so yeah. I was checking and he was a year older, he was a year above me at the, at the, at the art college. And I was chatting to him and showing him my picture. He said, I know someone that might interest you. Yeah. The nice thing about George is that I was photographing him, he just completely ignored me. So it's like I was there and I said to him, he said, What do you want? So we'll just do your job. And because of that I was able to get really natural pictures. I've always had a lot of history and when my mum passed. I was going through a vanity box of old photographs and the one that Russell had taken and I thought I now need to be documenting my own community and uh, that's what we've been doing for the last 15 years. It started there really. I mean for me, I basically I went to art school to be a painter. I used to love drawing in the street and I was always interested in people and I was drawing at some broadcast fish and chip shop and um, when I took my work back I bumped into uh, the tutor of Daniel Meadows who's a renowned documentary photographer. And he said to me, why don't you try taking the camera down there to do some background work for your painting? So I went, okay. And so basically I took the camera down there and I thought, well, why bother all this painting business? And then you know, basically I took lots of pictures in there, learning the trade, uh, uh, learning photography skills, f-stops, apertures, all that sort of stuff. And then I had an exhibition in the fish and chip shop with Bob Carvers. I had to wipe all the grease off the walls. I got pictures laminated, stuck them all up on the walls and left a, um, a comments book. And my favourite comment was, great pics of people enjoying their day the Bob Carver's way. And for me, I was sold. Being a rag and bone man, you're always asking people for things. And uh, I suppose I'm doing that still. I'm asking, can I spend five minutes with you or could you just kind of portrait? So that gave me a lot of confidence to be able to ask for things. So I think asking, you could always get no, but now that I'm time we'll tend to get a yes. So yeah, it gave me that confidence to do that. I think basically I, um, after I left art school, there was no way to make a living shooting documentary photography at all. So I got a job working in a general photographer's in the darkroom printing. I've always been an editorial type, I've always been interested in stories, and that's how my work is, is, is presented like a story. And so from working at general photographers, I then got a job with a, 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 a sort of like a regional news agency, Anglia Press Agency based in East Anglia, and then from there I left there to work for Reuters as a new international news photographer. I, I, I like editorial photography, I like storytelling, I like people, and that's the primary difference between George's pictures and mine is that mine have a narrow, story narrative, and George's images are like individual moments. So he's like a Vivian Meyer type story, he's a chosen moments. 
with our like story and theme to run through, hence the um, story about George and actually reimagining all the work as well, so it's a continuation from PP3 up to 22, 23. Uh, for me, I mean, I was, you know, I was brought up, I, I did my sort of education, schooling education in Cambridgeshire, and I wanted to just, I realised there's a lot more out there that I just wanted to have different. So I just thought, well, I'll try hard because I didn't know anything about it. And it turned out I lived in St George's Road and Cotton Street and just blown away by what. So you just literally walk out the front door and there's things to take pictures of. And I didn't have to travel very far from where I was living to take pictures. And I just, just loved it. And the people you met so friendly and warm and invited you in. Of course, they give me a little bit of hard time because I've got a southern accent, you know, so it was to be expected. But eventually it was just, just, just very, very rewarding. And, through the camera. The camera's like a passport to people's lives and once they trust you and you spend time listening to their stories and enjoying what they have to say then, then, then that's, where, that's what really interests me. Such a, a wealth of characters and good spirit people around there and it's a gift to be able to get like Russell said the stories and to take the pictures and the neighbourhood has changed a lot because of the demise of the fishing industry and work. But the people are warm hearted, it's always hi, how's the family? And it has changed. But the, the people who are still there, they've just got time for everybody. I think it's unique to the city. It's still a, a really strong community on there. And I'm a part of that community. So it makes it easy for me to just rock up on my camera and they know what I'm about and um, they all get prints off me and just generous people around there so and if I can share that with them what I'm doing it's just it's a gift to me to know. I mean it's always been important to me to give prints to people I photograph so photography they're quickly taking a picture so I give pictures too so whenever I possibly can I give a print so some people may in these pictures got some folded old print somewhere in, in the back of their house but I always try and do that because it's, it's nice and they have something special I think I hope yeah. depending on your mood it's like how would you choose a picture between Candy and Barry having a laugh and um, changing times where you're looking at the, the poverty you know so uh, obviously if you want to make a political statement or, or express your concerns you choose something from that story Whereas if you say, well, let's have a bit of fun at some point, you choose something can. And likewise, in terms of social change, the regular story is different. The fact is recycling, you know, so they're original recyclers, and it's still going on now, but that's the industry's changed as well. Even the fact that rags are no longer collected, neither brown furniture, it is a change, so it's very hard to say. But I suppose if I had to really choose one, I really like the picture of June outside a second-hand shop. I also really like the picture of the boy wearing a Superman t-shirt at the um, Changing Times uh, uh, story. And of course, well, no, that's not one, that's two minutes, isn't it? So I'm cheating, yeah? Yeah, it's like music, you know, you can't choose your best band because it changes every day. So today, I'm in a good mood. There's a couple there kissing, a black girl and a white guy kissing punks and youth culture. I know them from, from London. They're activists because I know the backstory on these people. But it's just a bit, just a moment of joy and kissing. It's not enough of it going on. I mean, I, I, I hope that people are inspired by our pictures to actually just photograph their own community. And you don't have to do it in a big way, like the fact is that I literally walked out the front doorstep and there's pictures there to be had. I think that people in different walks of society can actually document their own lives. Because also, so much is now photographically, digitally recorded, it's photographed, it's shared, and it's forgotten. I think what's important is to, is to archive this work in some way so you can actually preserve it for the future and share it with your family and friends. Because I think what's missing quite a lot is the ordinary lives, the ordinary happiness of people. So you get the streams of you know, the pop stars and the wealth, and then you get these sort of poverty porn of, of, of terrible things, you know, drug addicts. And, but you don't get the happy, happy middle, middle life of, of ordinary people of most of us are. And I think that's what I hope people get here. Oh, I, I can do that. I'd like people to, to 
study the pictures, look at the pictures and realise we're all on this planet for a short period of time and we're all connected and we've all got stories and just to be kind to each other and have conversations and I hope people take something away from this realising, yeah we are all connected and if people could just stay that way I'd be really happy.